Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michelle Forsley, and to, or this afternoon we're going to talk about the magic of mushrooms in your garden. So what I'm going to do is first talk about mushrooms in general and why they produce the magic in your yard and garden. I'm going to talk about this raised bed over here to my left, uh, which has got some grass growing in it, and I'll tell you why uh, we did that. And um, also I'm going to show you some examples from my yard and some ways in which you can grow mushrooms in your kitchen. So let me start first of all by saying that, you know, in biology there are five kingdoms. This is a classification system and fungi are one of those kingdoms. And fungi include mushrooms, which we're going to talk about, but they also include lichens, which are these things that grow on branches. You've seen them all in your yard. We can, you can come up to the table when we're done and have a look at those. And also some things that I didn't even know about. Um, things called protists or things that perform functions with and for cells and also monera or one cell organisms and finally of course plants which we have in our garden here. Now the thing about kingdom fungi is for the most part it's the hidden kingdom. The part you see above ground, the things that look like mushroom buttons that you put in your Thanksgiving gravy or that you eat basically are the fruit of the mushrooms. The rest of the mushroom is underground. And that's true for even the yeast, the molds that are, are fungi, and these lichens. This um, stuff you're seeing on the surface is the fruit of the plant. So a bit about the mushroom structure. You're all familiar with the mushroom cap. Uh, because we're not doing PowerPoint, I'll pass this around also. You can look at it more closely. Um, you have the cap of the mushroom, and not all mushrooms have caps. You'll see on the table here a mushroom that looks like a big, black, ugly, gooey ball. That's a mushroom that's in the later stages of its development, and there's one near it that's a newer version of it, but it's going to turn as ugly, and eventually it'll turn to mush on your lawn. Um, so not all mushrooms have a stem and a cap, but most many do, and you're going to see those most often and recognize them as such. But the, that's just the fruit of the mushroom. The real action in the mushroom, and where the magic happens, is underground with these filament-like structures called hyphae. And they form a network called a mycelium. The mycelium network, or also known as the mycorrhizal network, which literally means fungus root. And in that area, that's where the mushrooms do their thing. And what are they doing? They're breaking down nutrients and making them available to plants, trees, plants, grass, etc. in your garden, your fruits and vegetables. They make the phosphorus, nitrogen, zinc, iron, calcium, and other nutrients available by breaking them down and transporting them to the roots. So many times you'll see in your garden this white filament-like structure, and I think the other side of this page is even better, to show you how the filament structures are actually connecting to the root of the tree or to your geraniums or your tomato plants and that's a good thing so i'm going to pass this around and my assistant's going to help me there thank you ma'am and you can have a look at that now mushrooms are not plants so they do not um, make their own uh, food um, they don't need sunlight they often grow in the shade <clears throat> and um they produce spores, which um, are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. And you can see some spore prints on the white paper plates over here on the table. Now, <clears throat> the thing about this relationship that mushrooms have with other plants is one of three types. The first one is parasitic. This means that the mushroom or fungi is getting its nutrients from its host. It can be a plant or an animal. Some uh, mushrooms actually inhabit insects and of course kill them along the way. But, um, and sometimes they simply absorb nutrients and don't kill their host plant. Others are saprophytic, and I always have to really do that word slowly. And they obtain their nutrients by feeding on dead substances. Molds and yeasts are one of them. Um, and here's some examples of some <coughs> saprophytic mushrooms this is a, a shelf mushroom. This is a log from my backyard. And all of these mushrooms on the table are just from my yard. That's where they're from. I have a wooded uh, backyard. And uh, this log has been eaten away for some time, so it's very light. 
and you can see that it's mostly degraded on the inside. Mushrooms are the only entity in the, fun in the kingdoms that can eat cellulose or convert it to something else, making the sugars available. And this one's too heavy for me to pick up, but this is from an oak tree. We cut off a branch of it yesterday. The tree's been dead for some time, and there are lots and lots of mushrooms growing on it. In fact, several were growing on it. This one over here was growing on the side, and you can touch it. You can see that it's a quite different look than the button mushrooms you're used to seeing. It's moist, it's very moist because it's fairly new, and it hasn't dried out yet. Now, by the way, you cannot, you cannot get hurt by touching a mushroom. You might get hurt by eating a mushroom. You could get very sick, or in fact, some mushrooms can kill you. So never eat a mushroom unless you absolutely are sure what it is from the field, from the, from the forest, okay? But you can touch them and you can pick them up. You might think, for example, that this might be an Amanita mushroom. And we all know about the, the dead angel, you know, the, what do they call them? The white dead angels mushrooms, they're Amanitas and they're quite deadly. You can always tell an Amanita mushroom because of this veil structure on the base of the stem. So you can touch it, you can smell it, you can feel the cap because some mushrooms lactate. They produce a milky substance at the top of it. Some mushrooms produce a darker substance which is um, a stain, a staining substance. Mushrooms are used to um, create dyes for clothing and other things. And even these days now we're making mushroom pocketbooks, mushroom hats. We are using mushrooms in lots of different ways. Now the final um, type of relationship that a mushroom or fungi can have is the symbiotic relationship and this is one where there's interdependence and the picture uh, there between the tree and the mushroom is one of symbiosis and many mushrooms are symbiotic and this whole garden is enriched by mushrooms underground moving things around communicating in a sense for in, as nature can do something you might see in your yard is something called an Indian pipe anybody ever seen an Indian pipe in your yard it's white it looks like a finger sticking up. That is a, you notice it's very white because it does not produce chlorophyll. It gets its food from a russula mushroom. So whenever you see Indian pipe, look around for a reddish cap mushroom and that is a russula mushroom, which is its symbiotic partner. Now, so the magic of mushrooms, as I've described, is multiple. So it can be symbiotic or saprophytic because it's nature, nature's vacuum cleaner as this piece of wood breaks down, it's nature's recycler. And the other thing that mushrooms do is they are nature's remediation system. They clean out toxins, uh, poisons, etc. Now the table behind me has uh, what we tried out. As it's a test. What we tried to show is whether or not grass seed that was coated with mycelium would do better if it was uh, as compared to grass seed that was not. We also, because of our turf specialist uh, here at the university, suggested we also compare seed with compost and seed with soil and compost, and we did that. And there are four quadrants on the table there. It's a little messy because I stupidly, you know, cut the grass when it was wet, which you should never do, but I, of course, did it, right? Master Gardener over here, right? Anyway, but I think that the quadrant with the special seed, the soil, and the compost really looks the healthiest. It's a ryegrass seed, Kentucky ryegrass seed, by the way. And the seed was supplied by Pennington Seeds. Anyway, um, you judge for yourself whether or not the, the quadrant with the three different uh, mediums is looking the healthiest to you, compared, given that it was overwatered and then it was dry and then it was hot and everything else happened to it, including my own intervention of cutting it while it was wet. Um, now, the other thing you can do with mushrooms is you can grow them in your kitchen. You can grow them in your yard, even. Uh, and I've got on the table a couple of examples of ways in which you can grow mushrooms uh, in your kitchen. So this is an ordinary freezer bag, and it has um, uh, wood chips in it, and it has been injected with a needle, a hypodermic needle, basically, that had a syringe full of mycelium in a liquid suspension, kind of like sugar water, basically. And you can pass this around. Don't open it, please. 
but you can certainly pass it around and have a look. You'll see some darker brown areas. Those are the mushrooms beginning to form. And the white stuff is the mycelium that you can see there. And people uh, joke around in the home, grusher, home mushroom growing, growing community. They say, well, you can also have a 90-second mushroom because you can grow them in a 90-second rice bag. So you don't even need to have that big of a thing. What happens is as soon as the mushrooms start to pin, they call it, form little necks or, so, or the, the body of the mushroom, we'll cut a hole in the side here and the mushrooms will grow out of the bag. You can pass that around, please. So here's an example of a um, what's called a shiitake log. So there's one mushroom that's pretty well bloomed open, and you can see that it's more flat, and when they come out of the log, they're kind of round. And what happens is the cap will open up, and um, we know that this is ready for eating when the cap flattens out like that. Now this log is composed of some uh, growing medium. This is a fake log. It's not a real one, but you can also get a real log that has been impregnated with mycelium, it just takes a little longer for it to grow. It needs time for the mycelium to go through the log, develop the uh, structure in, inside the log to eat up the nutrients, and then it will fruit. Um, but this is one I got because this is a quick fruiting log, and I wanted it to show you here today. And um, David and I over here will be enjoying shiitake mushrooms tomorrow. We'll be having these for lunch. so. Um, please don't touch the mushrooms if you come up here. We don't want to introduce all kinds of other things to the mushroom uh, here, but I'm going to cover them back up. You can move the plastic tent around when you're up here, but please don't take it off and touch them. Any questions? Where'd you get the best growing logs? Um, I got, there's several companies that make uh, these kinds of things. One is the um, Mushroom Mountain, which is where this one's from. There's a lot of, just look up, you know, growing your own mushrooms and you'll have four or five really good reputable organizations. Um, I have another one at home, which is a uh, blue oyster mushrooms. It didn't behave itself this week and it didn't produce any mushrooms for me today. So I didn't bring it with me. Um, but it's, it will uh, at some point. Um, we have also now a, now a Delmarva fungi club. So if you're interested, uh, you can email. I have a chart here on the table uh, where you can get the address. It's delmarvafungi at gmail.com. And um, we'll uh, have some forays, go out into the woods. Uh, even if we never find anything, we have fun talking to each other and having a nice white walk through the beautiful woods parks around this area here. Any questions? Yes, um, they prefer shade. Some like more sun, and it depends on the phase of their growing. Um, I don't know of people who grow them in their garden like you would grow tomato plants, per se, because they have different growing mediums. Some grow on wood. Some grow on um, mulch. Uh, some grow on soil uh, or other substrates that are produced for the purpose of growing mushrooms. So... Um, your yard, per se, may not be the place, but you will find mushrooms in your yard at different times of the year as well. We're coming into the fall season, the cool weather season. You'll see jelly mushrooms. Those are quite edible. You've already had them in your Chinese food. It's that jelly looking, looks like an ear. Uh, those are quite edible. Uh, but please, again, don't eat a mushroom from the woods unless you know what it is. Yes, truffles are a fungi. They are indeed. Is temperature a big factor in protein? Yes, temperature can be a factor in fruiting. Um, these babies like warm air, they, and so do oysters. They like warmer air, 70 to 80 degrees they like. Uh, other mushrooms like the cold air. So you could go out in December and find mushrooms that you would not find in the summer. So moisture is a big factor for mushrooms. You'll notice after it rains, they pop up all over your yard because they like a little moisture to um, produce and they don't like dry. They don't like dry. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. It's a shiitake mushroom. 
the log is a growing medium that's been compressed into a log shape. That's all it is. And then it's been probably shot with um, a hypodermic to inject the mycelium into it. Uh, yes. Um, the study of mycology is what it's called. There are mycologists. And um, any other questions? Please join me at the table. We can talk about what's on the table. And thank you very much for stopping by.